All right, we'll get going in just a second here. Welcome everyone. Alrighty, so today's webinar is called Money Related Policies for Managed Service Providers. And it's really a, a true introduction. We want these webinars to be, you know, half hour, 45 minutes at the most. And just, you know, the, the goal is to give you an introduction to the concepts of managed services. I'd love every IT service provider to stop calling themselves a computer consultant and get into managed services. And one of the core pieces of managed services is the way that you focus on the money component. You make you take it very professionally and you make your business about business and not about computers. The truth is, if you're a technology consultant, you have seen lots of different technology and it's not all computers. So don't be the computer guy. Don't put your business based on computers but your business based on technology and service delivery and making money, helping people improve their businesses with technology. That truly is what it's about. My name is Carl Polichuk and I'm an author and a speaker and a podcaster. And I am a huge proponent of managed services. One of my books is the Managed Services Operations Manual. It's a four volume set and I have some other books and I'd encourage you to take a look at those over at smbbooks.com and uh, just kind of check them all out. I appreciate that. So in another broadcast that you can uh, sign up for, I talk about the basics of managed services. And in there, I talk about processes, procedures, and checklists. I didn't mention policies. So let me take a step back and Today, we're going to talk about money related policies. So what are policies? Policies are above the processes and procedures. Policies define literally your approach to business. Like what's your philosophy about your business? What's your mission? Why, why do you exist? Why do you come to work in the morning? Why does your business exist? Policies are at that level. And obviously, you know, we, we move from there to the the day to day procedure. So um, processes are kind of a big picture of getting things done, delivering services. And so every process has at least one procedure. Every procedure has at least one checklist. So your your policy might be, for example, that we get paid in advance, which we're going to talk about. So that's a huge that's a policy that is that is a philosophical view about the world. So there is a process for billing. There's a process for taking payments. Within that, there's a specific procedure. So for example, your, your process for running um, the billing at the end of the month or at the, the beginning of the month, whatever it might be, your process has within it several specific procedures. So there's a procedure for setting up the contracts within your professional services automation tool. There's a procedure for entering the invoices into QuickBooks, and that might be something that happens more or less automatically depending on your procedures, right? What your process is. So, you know, there's all those things. And then finally, there's a checklist where literally you hire a new bookkeeper, you'll be able to sit her down and say, look, here's what we do. We get paid in advance. Here's what happens on the 20th of the month. We run these reports and we verify it with the IT department and verify that we have the right numbers for all of these uh, clients. And then we push this big button and out comes the invoices. Whatever it might be, you have to break it down into pieces. And the, the final action steps where things actually get done are managed with checklists. So you might have a, a procedure for having the tech department verify that all of the contracts are correct in your PSA. And then you might have a procedure for the person within the um, book billing department to actually generate the invoices and make sure that the credit cards all get dinged. So there's a procedure within each of those departments. Each procedure will have at least one checklist, and that's your billing process. 
So today we're going to talk at a much higher level. We're going to we're going to mention processes and procedures, of course, but we're going to look from the perspective of financially, what decisions have you made that run your company? Now, one of the things about finances <clears throat> that I find in small businesses of all kinds, but you know, I have 20 years experience running a small IT shop, so I know I see this every day in IT. People try to be nice guys. So what happens is a client says, can you get that for me? Sure, I can get that for you. Then you go out and you buy some piece of software. So now you're out of pocket 100 bucks. Some clients want you to just give it to them at cost. And you're like, um, okay, so am I going to bill for my time? What am I going to do? So you're trying to be a nice guy, but you end up being out of pocket for at least some period of time. People assume that they have to take on every client they see. That's not true. Just because somebody has a crappy piece of hardware doesn't mean that they need to be your client just because they showed up on your doorstep. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to pick up every straight puppy you find. And also, some people assume that they have to say yes to every opportunity. Opportunities are frequently not good things. Sometimes opportunities are really an opportunity to lose money or to get sidetracked about your business. So I encourage you to begin thinking about financial policies, processes, and procedures, and thinking about you know, what, what will you intentionally do within your business with regard to finances. One of the stories I like to tell is about, and this happens all the time. It's not just one story. It happens all the time. I will meet somebody and be talking about their accounts receivable. And they will say something like, well, my accounts receivable is 10 or 20 or 50 or $100,000. And I say, wow, how can you afford that? Well, you know, I just, it happens a little at a time. There's a one job and then another and another and a, a bill goes late and so forth. And all I can think of is you made this happen. You let this happen within your own business. And so I said, well, you know, let's, uh, let me help you. We, we will call these people and we will get your money back. And I always hear this. I swear to you, this is, this is what I hear. Oh, I can't ask him for the money. That's my best client. And all I can think of is if your best client owes you 10 or 20 or $50,000, who's your worst client? It seems to me that what you've got is somebody who you have let them abuse you, take your services for free and not pay you. You're not charging finance charges. You're not charging late fees. You haven't sent them to collections and you continue to deliver service every month. This is not your friend. This is somebody who is truly abusing your good nature. And what's going to happen? I will tell you exactly what's going to happen. At some point, they'll come to you and you'll say, look, I got to get my money. And they'll say, look, I don't have $50,000. Can we make payments and I'll pay you 40? And you'll say yes. And what you've just done is give a 20% discount to somebody who's not your best customer. They are your worst customer. If you're charging $100 an hour, they have just given themselves a 20% reduction. So now you're charging them $80 an hour, whether you like it or not. So you just absolutely cannot stay in business doing that. And if you want to go broke and you want to go bankrupt, then by all means, you should continue doing that. But if you're in business to make money, then let me help you develop some policies to make money. And I, this is a no BS webinar right now. We're going to talk about why and how you can make money. And it might mean that you need to go find another client, but don't have a, a attitude of, of poverty and a mentality that, that more clients are not out there. There are millions and millions and millions of managed service clients out in the United States and in all the other countries where somebody's listening to this. There are lots of businesses where people are willing to pay a, a reasonable rate and they will pay on time and they will pay in advance. Go make those people your customers. So the first thing that I would tell you is to accept all forms of payment except an IOU. <laughs> so if somebody wants to pay you in cash, you should take cash. Yes, it's a hassle and it's sometimes difficult to deal with QuickBooks, uh, whatever, just do it. Checks, checks are good as long as they clear. You should have late fees and you should have bounced check fees. 
So if a check is not good, you should get your money back and you should send them to collections and you should get your 25 bucks. You should take credit cards. And I don't want to hear any argument about this. So many people tell me, oh, I don't want to pay the fees. First of all, if you haven't looked recently, you don't know what the fees are. A lot of people are paying 10% with PayPal or 5% with PayPal. You should be paying less than 2% for credit cards, for ACH, for electronic transfers, for PayPal. It's cheap today to do this. And you can shop around. If you need trouble finding somebody with, to help you with credit card processing, I can help you out. But the point is, it's a cost of doing business. So if you charge $120 an hour, raise your rate to 125 and take credit cards. And that's it. Now you're done. You've, you've covered the fees and you're still making money. You get paid in advance. Life is good. The other thing is you're never going to be in the situation where somebody owes you 10 or 15 or $20,000 and they want a, a discount, right? Instead of losing because you gave a discount to your worst customer, you get paid in advance with a credit card. And I just absolutely, I, I am so tired of having this argument. Just accept the fact that you have to take credit cards. I don't know about you, but I live in California. So I drive down the street and there's little guys with little trucks on the side of the road. One is selling oranges. Another one is selling cherries. And, you know, they're selling cherries in April. And I was like, well, it's not really cherry season here. And it turns out this guy, some entrepreneur, has found out that, oh, it's cherry season in Brazil and they've imported the cherries and they're sitting on the side of the road and they're selling them for $5 for a little bag. And he takes credit cards. The guy selling the watermelons off the back of his truck takes credit cards, right? So everybody can take credit cards. You can take credit cards. And yeah, you'll lose one or two or maybe even 3% if you have a bad credit card processor. But you don't lose five or 10 or 20 and you don't lose 50 and you don't get people who say, I'll pay you next week. You get paid in advance. It's gargantuan. It's, it's just, it's easy and it's straightforward and we can make this happen for you. So all you have to do is accept the fact that you should accept credit cards and then go online and look for somebody to help you. There are hundreds of credit card processors. And yeah, you, you gotta look around and you gotta shop around and you gotta make good decisions, but you should absolutely take these things. Your bank should be able to set you up with ACH uh, debit transfers. Those usually don't cost anybody anything. It comes out of the client's account, goes into your account, boom, done. Let it, electronic transfers, depending on how they are, you might have some bank fees involved in that. But again, it's all microscopic compared to the fact that you're getting paid in advance, which is huge. Now let's talk about getting paid in advance. <laughs> See this big orange thing? Memorize that, burn it into your brain. Revenue is the food for your business. But you can last a long time without food. If, if people stopped doing business with you, uh, you know, your business would go on, you'd, you'd sort of scratch it out, you'd figure out how to survive. But cash flow, cash flow is oxygen. You cannot last long without cash flow. Cash flow is, is having the money to pay the bills when they come in. So I encourage you to do managed services and to get 100% of what you do upfront by auto pay. So managed services is billed every month as recurring revenue. And if you take credit cards, you get paid in advance. All right. So what happens when you get paid in advance is that on the first day of the month, You've paid your employees, you've paid your light bill, everything is good. If you have hourly labor, I encourage you to sell it in prepaid blocks of time. And basically the way it works is you either sell blocks of five hours or 10 hours. And when the client uses it up, you charge them again and you charge it on a credit card. Or if they pay by check, that's fine, but they have to pay in advance before you will work. And what this does is it means that you are never out of pocket. Nobody ever owes you money. Now, if you choose to do a weekly billing and have clients owe you, some will pay immediately and some will pay in 10 days and some will pay in 30 days and some will pay in 60 days. And it means that, you know, like, let's say you pay your employees twice a month. So that means in 60 days, you've paid your employees four times 
for an hour of labor that um, you haven't collected yet. So you just, you really, you know, don't blow this off. Take this very, very serious. Uh, project labor, generally, you know, I encourage people to get 50% up front. So you get a project that's $5,000 in labor. You're going to get $2,500 up front. And then you're going to make milestone payments so that, uh, you know, when the, when the server is finished installing or when the Internet connection is up or whatever, there are, there are points at which you collect the rest of the money. Hardware and software absolutely get paid 100% up front. I have not had anybody argue about this. And people are always worried that uh, before they order from this distributor, like, oh, what happens? You know, this guy wants this $2,500 machine. Okay, well, collect $2,500 and then you have the money and you can pay the distributor and you don't have to worry about it. So um, getting paid up in, in, in advance for hardware and software should absolutely not be an issue. You just tell people that's our policy and then that's what they'll do. So that might mean that there's a little delay or that you have to help them with leasing. Leasing is always a great option. If you help them with leasing, the distributor will help you get connected with a leasing company and they love it and you love it for a simple reason. The client might make payments, but you get your money up front. Once they sign the leasing deal, it's a it's basically a bank loan. And so the a piece of the money goes to the distributor to pay for the hardware, and a piece of the money goes to you for the upfront labor, and then you get your profit, right? Because you have got a profit margin built into that. In fact, you can usually add one or two percent to the whole deal. Like if they lease, you get an extra one percent on everything just because it's going through the leasing company. So that kind of stuff makes it really easy to get paid in advance. And again, lots and lots of people have done it. Uh, if you take, let's say, 10 people who start an IT business, five of them will assume that they have to buy this stuff and deliver it to their clients and then get paid later. And uh, five will get 100% upfront or some variation of that. Um, and no one's going to know the difference, right? It's just, there are people who do this every day. They start out their businesses getting paid upfront for hardware and software, and they never have any issues. And it's only the people who, for whatever reason, didn't start out that way that think it's an issue. Go talk to the other 50% of the business and they'll tell you, just do it. You know, it just, just do it. And then hosted services, 100% upfront. So if you're selling spam filtering, antivirus, uh, web hosting, hosted email services, hosted storage, whatever that, whatever it is, all that stuff is paid upfront. So um, the, the thing is that you are going to buy these services, and maybe you don't pay up front. Maybe you pay 15 days into the month or at the end of the month or whatever. You're not necessarily going to be on a schedule of paying yours on the first of the month, but your clients must. If they're paying for 250 gigs of storage, then they get a bill for 250 gigs of storage on the first day of the month paid with a credit card. So that money flows into your account. And again, you have that money up front, okay? It's, it's so huge. Let me just show you. So <clears throat> this is an example of, and, and uh, if you uh, want a much clearer vision of this, I, I have a graphic that you can download. Just send an email to me um, or, or put a note in the, uh, in the questions below, and I'll go ahead and send it out to you after the webinar is over. So... <clears throat> Let's just walk through this. So let's say September 30th, your balance is zero, which means October 31st, your balance is zero. You bill for managed services. Now this is being paid in arrears, which means that you bill them and they pay you later. So October 1st, uh, you invoice $5,000 for managed services. Okay, the, your bank account is still zero because you haven't been paid. And then you have a new project that gets uh, started and you bill $5,000 for that, okay? So you've sent out the bill, but your bank is still zero. Then on the third, you pay your rent. So now you're down $1,500. And then you bill for $2,000 for hardware, but again, you haven't collected any. You have uh, an hourly labor that you bill um, for $2,500, but you it's just more money that's owed you. You haven't collected any. 
you pay your employees, let's say $2,500 is the, is the bi-monthly payroll on the 10th. So now you're out cash $4,000. You pay your distributor for the hardware that you ordered. So that's $1,800 for that hardware that you're collecting 2,000 up above. Okay, so now you're out of pocket $5,800. Okay, the client pays you for that hardware. Thank goodness, okay. So you apply that, so now you're down $3,800. On the 25th, it's that second payroll, right? If you pay your client, your employees twice a month. So that's 2,500 bucks, so now you're out $6,300. On the 25th, the people who pay you for the, the hourly labor that you build on the 5th, uh, yeah, that's 2,500 bucks comes in. Okay, so now you're only out 3,800. And finally, people who, pay for the $5,000 of managed services that was billed on the first of the month. So now you have actual cash in the bank of $1,200. And then that project labor comes in for $5,000. So now you have $6,200 in the bank. Okay, so here's what's happened. You have made, you've brought in $6,200 for the month. That's, that's the, the flow of cash that's come into your business after you've paid your rent and your employees and paid for the hardware and software that needed to be delivered. Okay. It's not quite profit, but it's close. So we'll just say $6,200 is the profit that's visible on this sheet. But what's happened in the middle is that you have had to have on hand $6,300 from somewhere to pay for the rent, to pay for the hardware, to pay for the employees, right? You've had to come up with $6,300. So really, the only way to stay out of the negative is at the first of the month, September 30th, you needed to start the month with $6,300 in the bank. That's the only way you're going to avoid going negative at any point in the month. Now, the other thing that happens is where did you get this money? Where did you get the money to pay the employees? Where did you get the money to pay for that hardware? Well, for most of us, it means that you started with the line of credit or you put it on a credit card or you borrowed it from your mother-in-law or something. And in a perfect, perfect world, it all got paid back when you got those two payments of $5,000 each and that one payment uh, for hardware, it all got paid back and you then paid your bills. But we also know the truth is that sometimes, you know, you put that $1,500 on the line of credit and then things happen and stuff comes up and, you know, 30 days of a month goes by. And so maybe you paid back 1,100 or you paid back 1,500, right? And then you need to do payroll and you borrow money for that. And somehow at the end of the month, you don't, you don't really have the $5,000 for paying back all that payroll. So you pay back 4,800 or whatever. And what happens is gradually, slowly over time, your line of credit from the bank gets larger and larger. And the amount that you owe on your credit cards gets larger and larger. And the amount you owe your mother-in-law gets larger and larger. And trust me, I have been there. I have had the negative cash flow. I have had the situation where at the end of the month, I have owed people more money than, than it took, uh, you know, that, that I earned that month. So, yeah, you earned $6,200, but you did it in a way where you were stressed out from the 3rd to the 30th dealing with the fact that you've got a negative cash flow. Now, let's look at the exact same business getting paid in advance. So, September 30th, your balance is zero. <clears throat> October 1st, you ding credit cards for $5,000. And you know what? Yeah, strictly speaking, it might take two, two business days for that to settle into your bank account. But basically, you got $5,000 in the bank. And then you bill for project labor. Boom, you got $10,000 in the bank. Then you pay your rent, so now you got $8,500. You bill somebody for hardware, and you bill them and ding their credit card. Now you got $10,000 in the bank. And then you bill for the hourly labor, that's 2,500. So now you have $13,000 in the bank. You do your first employee payroll and it's 2,500. So now you got 10,500 in the bank. 
you pay your distributor for the hardware, 1800 so now you've got $8,700 in the bank. Your second employee payroll comes along, that's $2,500, so you get $6,200 in the bank. Notice what's missing is, is these payments, receiving payments here and there throughout the month doesn't happen because you got paid up front. Notice that the bottom line is exactly the same, $6,200. That's your profit, at least for what's visible on the screen here. So that piece is completely unchanged, but look what happens in the middle. In the middle, you always have money in your bank. You always have, in fact, uh, after the second of the month, you always have at least the $6,200 profit in the bank. It's just sitting there waiting for you to use it in a way that you see fit. Now, let me tell you the beautiful thing about having money in the bank. Obviously, it reduces a great deal of stress. But, you know, here's what happens. It's, it's almost the exact opposite of having cash flow problems. When you have extra money in the bank, then every once in a while you say, look, man, I got this $6,200 profit for the month, but I know I'm going to get paid in a few more days. I'm going to have another $5,000 for managed services, and I'm going to get, you know, hourly labor and da-da-da-da-da. So what happens is you siphon off a little bit of that money and you put it into savings. And maybe it's only $200 this month and $200 next month. But what happens is that instead of on the left-hand side, gradually and slowly going into debt, borrowing money on credit cards and line of credit from the bank, you are instead gradually and slowly taking dollars and nickels and pennies and putting it into investments that is never touched again because you're always positive cash flow. And I know this seems simplistic, but, but that's because it is. You flip the switch and you, you make policies to get paid in advance and your business will be dramatically better in every way. The stress that goes away when you don't have to worry about money is unbelievable. It's good for your personal relationships, for your marriage, for your business. It's good for everything. And it's surprisingly easy to do. You look at what's on this page. Look at what's on this page. And right now, write the most important policy you can write for your business. And that is to say, dear customers, you know, go out 30 days. So, so whatever it is, go out 30 days and say, um, <clears throat> as of this date, uh, we need to get paid in advance for everything. So there's going to be a small adjustment to your um, invoices. And then after that, we'll be we're just getting paid in advance. And no one will complain. They will all understand. This is just a minor change in the business. Now you're in line with the rent and the cleaning service and everything else that they buy on a credit card month after month after month. And then... Next month, you write a memo that says, uh, beginning uh, in 30 days, we're going to get paid in advance for all hardware and software, but we just have to do it. It's what, you know, it's the 21st century. If you don't want to pay us in advance for hardware and software, that's cool. The way it's going to work is we will charge you for the labor to sit down with you and help make sure that you buy the right thing. But there'll be, you know, whatever, an hour's worth of labor charged to help you do that. And that way you don't have to care whether they buy it from you or not. As long as you can help them buy the right thing, um, you're, you're still making a bunch of money on that. Again, what you're going to find is nobody will complain. They will, they will just simply accept it and it will be a good thing. Now, cash flow aside, the other really big thing that you can do to help your finances is to use a PSA, which is a professional services automation tool. Uh, the biggies in the business are ConnectWise, Autotask, and TigerPaw. Uh, there's lots and lots of other ones that people use. You can use a CRM, which is a customer relationship management tool, but they're not really designed to provide managed services stuff. Max Focus has a great service desk that is evolving into a PSA. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that, and that's at maxfocus.com. And the thing that you do with the PSA is you're, you're very 
consistent about putting everything into the system. And that takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. And we'll have another webinar about that. Um, but for now, just know that it's worth going and, and starting the investigation. If you've uh, been in the business long enough, you know that G-I-G-O means garbage in, garbage out. And that's just a, a nice way of saying you can only get reports out of the system if you put the information into the system. So the reason that this is under an introduction to finances is that you need to track everything. You need to track all of the labor that you spend in your business. You as the owner, you as the manager, all of the technicians, everybody's time needs to be tracked because that's the only way you can determine whether you're actually making profit on a client or on a project. So how billable are your technicians? 60%, 80%? Are you sure? Can you prove it? If you don't track that information in a service board or a PSA, you can't. Um, how much money did you actually spend on a client, right? And when be people begin to track their time between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, then you're going to know whether they went, they took that time to go to lunch or to, to go to the bank or whether they were at a client for an hour and you didn't bill for it. What happens in a PSA is that nothing gets lost, dropped, or forgotten, okay? This is your ticketing system. This is where you track everything. And um, we have what's called internal time and external time. Internal time has to do with keeping track of, of how much time your employees used so that you can pay them. External ha time has to do with how much time was spent either delivering managed services or delivering hourly labor because it's uh, either break, fix, or uh, they are working on a project or something like that. It's great to sell flat fee projects because you can make them very, very profitable over time by having the right processes and procedures in place. But you still have to track the time that you spend on a flat fee project to make sure that you're profitable, right? And you want to be right in the neighborhood of 40% profitable. Uh, I would accept 30% profitable on labor for a short period or for one project. But generally speaking, you need to be in the 40% range. So think about, you know, how can you demonstrate to me or to anybody else that you're 40% profitable on labor? Well, you've got to have hard numbers and just saying, oh, trust me. Oh, 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 I used to always think every project in my head was profitable. I would go through it in my brain. I go, well, you know, I'm only going to spend about 40 hours and uh, I'm going to do this and that. And I'm going to charge $100 an hour and blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of the month, there'd be no money and I couldn't figure out what happened. And it's because in my brain, everything makes sense. In my brain, everything's profitable. In the real world, 40 hours became 50 hours. Uh, the, the $100 an hour became much less and on and on and on. So, you know, in the real world, we, we always are telling ourselves stories about how things work. When you put everything into the system, then the stories go away and it either is or is not black or white. You either are or you are not profitable. You're either making 30% or 40% and some of you 20 and some of you 10 and some of you nothing. So <clears throat> get a PSA. If you haven't got one already, go start looking at them, figuring out what makes sense for you. They all have you know, small license um, uh, options available. Uh, if you've got one and you put it in place, but you aren't really using it or you haven't really configured it, please take the time to configure your PSA. It's, it's one of the biggest things you can do to increase profitability is to put everything in your company into your professional services automation tool. Now, there's all kinds of processes and procedures. Most of the stuff that we talked about today are on standard operating procedures have to do with kind of the front office, you know, policies about how you run the business. But, you know, it, everything touches everything. So there's front office policies about getting paid in advance and so forth that affect employee management, right? I mean, obviously, you cannot pay employees if you can't keep track of the money. And one of the early lessons that I was uh, told when I started a business is, if you can't pay the taxes, do not make the payroll. And that's pretty hard, right? So if you don't have the money, the cash flow, to be able to pay your employment taxes, you are in deep, deep trouble if you start making payroll and not make and not paying the federal government their taxes, because they will take away your birthday. 
right? So the, the policies of how you manage money affect employees. And obviously they affect the service department and service delivery. Making sure that people in the service department log their time, both internal time and, and client facing time is extremely important. So that has to do with that department. And the client facing piece of it is, is fairly straightforward. Once you adopt these policies of getting paid in advance, adopt the policies of taking credit cards and, and selling managed service contracts that get paid on credit cards, then the cash will begin to flow. And believe me, this is not a big deal for clients. This is for some reason, there's a psychological barrier. This is a big deal for technicians, but it's just not a big deal for clients. So think about the big, big picture. Everything in your business needs to work together. I would encourage you, I have a, a little offer today. I thank you for your time, but I'd encourage you to take a look at the Managed Services Operations uh, Manual. It's four volumes. It is literally hundreds and hundreds of procedures, um, all available to you. And um, there's lots and lots of additional material, Excel spreadsheets and so forth. And you can get 10% off today if you go to smbbooks.com and use the code WEB10, you'll get 10% off of not just this book set, but your entire order. And I have to say, so this is an expensive set of books because it's not just a set of books. It really is a business model for running your business professionally. And yeah, it'll, it'll take a couple hours labor to pay for it, but then you will make hundreds and hundreds of hours you will save and make because you have this. If you wanna start out a little more slowly, then I encourage you to take a look at Managed Services in a Month, which is only like 25 bucks. It's available as an audio book or Kindle book or however you want it, or a paperback. Uh, and then finally, Service Agreements for SMB Consultants. So those two are kind of the big double whammy if you wanted to get started and not spend a great deal of money. Service Agreements for SMB Consultants is a quick start guide to managed services. Two different kind of versions about how to get started, but both chock full of really good stuff. And again, use that code WEB10 at smbbooks.com uh, to get 10% off of your entire order. And that is it for today. I thank you for tuning in and I encourage you to check back for more videos and also go to smbbooks.com, go to smallbizthoughts.com and check out my blog and podcasts there. Thank you for tuning in today. I appreciate your time.